let's welcome Dr. Terry Wu. Uh, Terry has a presentation about why is neuromarketing disrupting the retail market world. We had a good conversation about neuromarketing, and I was really fascinated. Dr. Wu is with Neuroscience Services, and he's going to tell us how neuromarketing influences consumers and their choices. Please welcome Terry. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. About 20 years ago, a group of researchers did a study at a wine store. They want to find out if the store's background music could influence shoppers' wine selections. Here's what they found. On the days when they played German music, German wines, also French wines, by three to one. Then on the days when they played French music, French wines, also German wines, by three to one. But here's the kicker. They asked shoppers if the background music influenced their wine selections. You probably could guess. Over 90% of shoppers say no. This study shows that our buying decisions can be influenced by something so subtle that we don't even notice. The study also raises some important questions. How do we make, make buying decisions? Do we make decisions consciously based on facts, reason, and logic? Or do we make decisions unconsciously based on emotions, feelings, and intuition? Next, I'd like to share with you how unconscious emotions influence our decisions. You remember New Coke? Here's a story behind New Coke. In 1985, Coca-Cola was losing market share to Pepsi. Pepsi had been taunting Coca-Cola by claiming that in blind taste testing, more people preferred Pepsi over Coke. Coca-Cola decided to improve the taste by changing its formula. It came up with New Coke. Over 200,000 people taste test the new Coke. Overwhelmingly, people prefer new Coke over the original Coke. But more importantly, people prefer new Coke over Pepsi. With a lot of confidence, Coca-Cola rolled out new Coke. But very quickly, this sweet drink turned into a bitter pill that cost Coca-Cola tens of millions of dollars. Angry customers started protesting around the country, demanding the original Coke back. Anxious customers started hoarding Coke products left on store shelves. Coca-Cola headquarters received about 8,000 angry phone calls a day. You can't help asking, how could 200,000 people get it wrong? What did Coca-Cola miss? What Coca-Cola missed was the strong emotional connections people had. For nearly 100 years, Coke had been marketed as a feel-good product. Their marketing slogans included, have a Coke and a smile. Open happiness. I like to buy the world a Coke. Celebrities like Elvis, Marilyn Monroe, and the Beatles were the face of Coca-Cola. If you don't feel well, have a Coke. <laughs> Coke was more than a sweet beverage. Drinking Coke had to become a feel-good experience. That feel-good experience involves thoughts, feelings, and memories. Well, drinking Coke seems a bit complicated, doesn't it? A study published in 2004 shows how Coca-Cola's marketing has imprinted our brains with good thoughts, feelings, and memories. In this study, volunteers were asked to drink either Coke or Pepsi while their brains were scanned to find out which part of the brain became active. The researchers started out with, with blind taste testing like the Pepsi challenge. And they were able to replicate the result of the Pepsi challenge, that is, Slightly over 50% of volunteers preferred Pepsi over Coke. No surprise there. Then the researchers made a slight change to the Pepsi challenge. The volunteers were told exactly what they were going to drink before taking a sip. It's no longer blind taste test. Suddenly, 75% of volunteers preferred Coke over Pepsi. More surprisingly, while they're drinking Coke, the emotional part of the brain, the memory part of the brain, and the thinking part of the brain became very active. In sharp contrast, this elevated brain activity pattern was not observed while they were drinking Pepsi. What does the study tell us? The study demonstrates what happens in our brains unconsciously when we think of a popular brand like a Coca-Cola. The study also demonstrates that our thoughts, feelings, and memories 
can unconsciously change our experience with the product. This is exactly how the unconscious mind influences our choices. The thoughts, feelings, and memories evoked by the Coca-Cola brand are the strong emotional connections people have. And Coca-Cola missed those strong emotional connections when they reduced this iconic drink to just taste. This is why New Coke failed. So this brain study, we can see how marketing can influence our decisions and our emotions without our awareness. This is where neuroscience meets marketing. Welcome to neuromarketing. Neuromarketing is a new science consumer decisions. It studies how we make buying decisions and how our emotions and intuition shape our decisions. But why did marketers start paying attention to our emotions, intuition, and unconscious mind? Here are some of the reasons. Over the last few decades, neuroscience research has confirmed that about 95% of our decisions are made unconsciously. During the same time, medical studies have shown that without emotion, we simply cannot make decisions. Inside the human brain, there are many highly specialized areas. Each area has unique functions. Some are responsible for seeing, some for hearing, some for tasting. And this large area of the brain colored in blue is what we call the limbic system, is the emotional brain. All our emotions depend on this part of the brain. Our love, compassion, optimism, pride, joy, happiness, as well as anger, fear, anxiety, embarrassment, guilt, and sadness are centered in this part of the brain. Neuroscientists often learn more about the brain when something goes wrong. Here we have Frank. He had a stroke. The stroke damaged a large part of his emotional brain. What's going to happen to him? What you will see is Frank will have a very difficult time making decisions, even the simplest decisions. When he goes to a grocery store to buy breakfast cereal, he will agonize over the decision whether he should choose Wheaties, Cheerios, or Corn Flakes. Without his emotional brain being fully functional, he simply cannot make that decision. Every purchase involves decision making. Both neuroscience and marketing can help us understand how we make decisions and what influences our decisions. This marriage between neuroscience and marketing has given birth to neuromarketing. But why does neuromarketing matter? Every year, nine out of 10 new products fail. About $100 billion spent on marketing are wasted. The main reason is that traditional marketing fails to pay attention to consumers' unconscious emotional experiences. And this is what happened to New Coke. If we can avoid wasting so much money on mindless marketing, both consumers and business win. With neural marketing, the focus is on creating better customer experiences. And it does work. First, I'd like to share with you how Google taps its users' unconscious behavior to maximize its revenues. We all have seen Google ads before. The links in these ads are colored in blue. Every time you click on these blue links, Google makes money. One click can be $5, $50, or even $500 to Google. Naturally, Google wants its users to click on these ads more often. We know that color can impact our emotion and our behavior. The question Google asked was whether a subtle change of color in these blue links could change its users' clicking behavior. Several years ago, Google tested close to 50 shades of blue in these links, wanting to find out if certain shades of blue could generate more clicks. One shade of blue did generate more clicks. By adopting that color, Google increased its annual revenue by $200 million. This is the power of neuromarketing. If you know what clicks with the brain, you can apply that knowledge to create a better customer experience. That better customer experience can translate into a stronger bottom line. This is why your marketing works. Next, I'd like to share with you how a slight and noticeable speed improvement by Amazon increases sales by $1.7 billion. According to Amazon, a one-tenth of a second speed improvement on Amazon's website can increase the sales by 1%. Consciously, we cannot detect one-tenth of a second difference, but unconsciously, our brains notice it. By speeding up the website ever so slightly, 
Amazon creates a better customer experience. A better customer experience generates more sales. This is the power of neural marketing. If Google's unnoticeable change of color makes a click more, or Amazon's unnoticeable speed improvement makes a buy more, what does that tell us about our decision making? Are we in total control of our decisions, or are they influenced by something so subtle that we don't even notice? A study published in 1975 shows how invisible social influence can shape our decisions. In this study, volunteers were asked to rate quality and price of cookies from two jars. One jar had 10 cookies. The other one had only two. The volunteers were told the cookies in the jar with only two left were in high demand and in short supply. Not surprisingly, those cookies were rated as higher in quality and price because it was believed that more people wanted them. What is surprising is that all the cookies used in the study were identical. We tend to believe if something's wanted by more people, it must be good and valuable. Why is this invisible social influence so persuasive? It is because decisions create uncertainty. We feel safer by following decisions made by a crowd. This is a natural bias in our brains. Amazon understands this bias very well and uses this bias to persuade us to buy. Imagine you need a new coffee maker. How does Amazon help you decide? First, you're going to see a four-star rating, then over 5,000 customer reviews, then over 1,000 questions answered, then number one bestseller. All this information is based on other customers' opinions. This information comes before you see the price and the free shipping offer. Amazon persuades you by using this invisible social influence. Most people have not heard of neural marketing yet, but if you ever bought anything on Amazon, you've been persuaded by Amazon's neural marketing techniques. So far, we have seen how our buying decisions can be influenced by what we see, what we hear, and what we taste. Next, I'd like to share with you how our buying decisions and our judgments can be influenced by what we, sm what we smell. In 2009, a group of researchers showed that subtle scent can affect our decisions and our judgments without our awareness. In this study, sweat samples were collected from two groups of people. The first group of people exercised at the gym for about an hour. Their sweat was collected and sealed in the bottle. Let's call this the happy sweat. <laughs> the second group of people were first-time skydivers. <laughs> they were thrown out of the airplane. They spent the next minute in free fall. They're scared out of their mind. And when they landed, their sweat was collected and sealed in the bottle. Let's call this fear sweat. The researchers asked a group of volunteers to smell the difference between the happy sweat and the fear sweat. They want, to see, they want to see if the volunteers could smell the difference. Nobody could smell the difference between the happy sweat and the fear sweat. And then the volunteers were asked to smell the ha either the happy sweat or the fear sweat while their brains were scanned to find out which part of the brain became active. Here's what they found. While they're smelling the happy sweat, everything in the emotional brain was status quo. No changes were found. But in sharp contrast, while they're smelling the fear sweat, the fear center in their emotional brain lit up like a Christmas tree. Then the volunteers were shown a photo with a neutral facial expression. They were asked a simple question. Does she look stressed or relaxed? You probably could guess, those who smelled the happy sweat thought she looked relaxed. Those who smelled the fear sweat thought she looked uh, stressed. So what does the study tell us? The study shows that subtle scent can activate the emotional brain without our awareness. It also shows that our decisions and our judgments can be influenced by what we smell unconsciously. Next, I'd like to share with you the power of scent in marketing. But first, I will explain why scent can be a such a strong emotional trigger. 
Let's go back to the limbic system or the emotional brain. The question we want to ask is, of the five major senses we have, which sense has the most direct access to the emotional brain? If you start off from the, from the eye, the ear, the mouth, and the skin, you're four to six synapses away. But if you start off from the nose, you're only one synapse away from the emotional brain. Between the nose and the emotional brain, you have the most direct shortcut. This is why scent can trigger a very strong emotional reaction bypassing the conscious awareness. In 1995, a group of researchers want to find out if certain scent could affect uh, the amount of money people spend on the casino. So they select three areas on a slot machine floor at a casino. The first area was scented with scent number one. The second area was sent with center number two. The third area was control area. Over the period of the weekend, they monitor and tally the amount of money collected through the slot machines in all three areas. And here's what they found. The scent number one area, the amount of money collected increased by 45%. The second area and the control area, no difference were found. By introducing a subtle pleasant scent, you create a more comfortable experience for the customers. And that more comfortable customer experience can increase your customer's spending. This is the power of newer marketing. I hope you feel inspired by this new way of marketing and more importantly by this new way of thinking. I'd like to close my talk with one more story. This story has some bathroom humor literally and figuratively. It's about urinal spillage. When a guy stands around a urinal, he often does his business mindlessly and aimlessly. <laughs> Spillage happens, and it costs money to clean it up. It's a universal problem. In 1990s, the Amsterdam airport came up with a brilliant solution. All they did was to etch the image black fly near the dream urinal. When guys see that black flag, they start aiming at it unconsciously. <laughs> that reduces spillage by 80%. Well, other than my poor taste of humor, what's the point? <laughs> I like this story because this fly serves as a good metaphor. When it comes to marketing, business owners and marketers always want to find game changers. But very often, they look for game changers all in the wrong places. Sometimes they just throw something at the wall, see if it sticks. But if you understand how the brain works, if you understand how people make their decisions, you can find a game changer that can have a huge impact. The most fascinating thing is very often, this game changer is something we don't even pay attention to. It can be something very subtle, like the background music at a wine store, a slight change of color by Google, a notable speed improvement by Amazon, a subtle pleasant scent in an environment, or a fly as a target. Once you find something subtle by following your signs, the impact will be anything but subtle. You all want to outsmart your competition. You want to make your business thrive. Here's something I encourage you to try. Find your fly. <laughs> and thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, thank you.